we're going to start a walk up Blind Hughes Sluice. Sounds very unappetizing, doesn't it? I'm just never on these dogs. I'm just going to walk this way. I always see this place when the tides are out, so you can kind of always see these boats. I always you think of like a boat graveyard. Soon we're going to head up that hill. I mean, this just shows how windy it gets from here. Look at these trees. That tree has literally just gone. No, nope, I'm done. I'm falling over. Now, what is this? It looks like a very coggy thing, doesn't it? Still locked up, whatever it is. Maybe it's near the boats. Maybe it's somewhere kind of holding boats here. I have no idea. If you don't know the comments, you know that, because I'd be very interested. We're now at Clevedon Pill. Soft mud, sailing, strong currents. Do not lose inflatables. Don't think you'd want to. And the boat graveyard continues. I mean, obviously, it's not a graveyard of boats, they're just being stored here for repair or just stored here generally. But it always reminds me so eerie. All these boats are just here, especially down around this area. Um, oh, yeah, there's the stairs you can climb. No thanks. <laughs> seem a bit risky. But yeah, these boats they always just seem a little worse for wear. So the first part of our walk is called Poet's Walk. It's about half a mile to the seafront this way. I'm not going to lie, it's quite steep in places. But you can immediately feel it, you can immediately feel it in your legs. That the steepness starts almost immediately. immediately see the benefit of walking up here. But yeah, you'll very quickly learn it goes up and down a lot. Despite the fact that it's so cloudy, you can actually see really far today. I'm surprised. Look at all the little whales over there. There's also these really handy benches along the route that you can just sit and admire the views from. I do love how the fence is. It's like a little holes in the fence, you can actually see through and see the view. This was really overgrown, like last year, year before. I think they've cut it down better now, which is very good. And there's our first shot of the pier. It has been described as Britain's most loveliest pier. So if you can tear your eyes away from the sea on the left, or the estuary, I should say, or the channel, you come to St Andrew's Church on the right, you can actually walk around the graveyard around there. It's a quaint little bridge. So yeah, here's the path to St Andrew's Church.
So we're just arriving at one of the lookouts. Reminds me of an old castle, doesn't it? <laughs> the turrets at the top. Turrets, that's probably not what they're called, are they? No, I'm pretty sure they're not. But look how well it frames the pier. Oh my, people are actually swimming in today. It must be freezing in there. This is actually designed to be swam in. It's not like they're just rammed thing. It's actually designed sectioned off area to do so. You can see there's a, a little um, mural just there to show you what you can do. Hello. If you'd like a more adventurous walk, you can take these steps when you come from the seaside area. The seafront, that's the, one, that's the word I was looking for. Ooh, it's a Cleveland history trail. We've now arrived at Salt House Fields. So Salt House Fields itself, it has a park for the kids to play in over there. I'm not going to show you too much, it's just over there. <laughs> it also has its own little miniature railway. I don't know if it's probably not operating today because we're not really in the season. But you can see the route, it kind of goes all the way around the main field area. And sometimes they have like events in this field as well. So it's the Clevedon Miniature Railway. You can see the track just runs around the entire um, field. It's not on the tracks today. It's quite cool detailed little thing. This area you might say is probably the most interesting side of it because more planted up. Of course once you get out of the side of this area it kind of is just literally a field. It's quite a reasonably large circuit but it is just a field. So this miniature golf course was completely redone up last year I think it was. They were down here at the beginning of the year and they completely were ripping up the old one. It's all now repainted and redone. All looks nice and fresh again. I heard that they've got the train more at the back there. That's very similar to what the actual train looks like down here. I think it's probably the same colour scheme as well. It's very busy around here by the refreshments. They can sell ice creams and snacks, drinks, and of course they have amusements, which I'm surprised is actually open at the moment because, like I said, it's still quite early in the season. Oh my god. I just smell chips. They smell amazing. I went for a nice hot chocolate, it's actually really nice, it was £3.50, which is, is reasonable I guess for a seaside area. If you can see, the beach itself is less sand and more pebble, we're going to walk on it in a minute. It feels a bit strange to foot when you walk on it, but we'll get on it. Good to see this pub open again, it does really nice food in there. So this is a time capsule here in Cleveland. I guess it was planted, planted, is that the right word? In um, 2000. There's a lot of these going around about time, wasn't there? There's another sign if you didn't need it, that it can get a bit windy here. The trees are literally growing, slanting to the right. Now I'm not gonna lie, when I first discovered this seating, I couldn't work out why on earth it was here. Because the sea is that way. And these seats are all pointing this way. And I was always like, I don't get it. Why is it here? Let's answer my own question. There's a bound stand right over there. I'm pre So we're now approaching the Clevedon Sailing Club. And these boats, they don't look like the boats at the other end of the walk. They don't look quite the same as They look like actually seaworthy. And you'd hope so because they get used fairly regularly. You still never catch me in them, but they're here. Ooh. They seem to have a, a pigeon collection. So after you come through the shop, you come on to Clevedon Pier. There's like a restaurant to the right hand side as you come on. There's also a museum at the end, which we might just wander up afterwards. These planks are way more improved than they were a few, uh, year, well, quite a few years ago. All these planks are wood. There's little brass plaques you can buy to commemorate memories or loved ones. 
can never tell look, there's also one for One Direction on this pier somewhere. I can't remember where it is. I think it's near the end, near the... I think you've probably already gone past it, actually. There's a small little cafe upstairs as well, at the end of the pier, if you want to treat yourself to a, a sit-down drink at the end of the walk. But if you look down there, you can kind of see where the boats used to, people used to board the boats from. And if I'm right, it's got like, several layers, depending on how big the boat was and how much water was in at the moment. So that's one layer, and you can see just underneath it, it has multiple levels. There's a model in the museum which shows how that works. So this is the view from Clevedon Pier. Now, it's actually surprisingly quite a clear day, so you can see a fair bit. You can see it in the distance. I'm not sure it's coming from camera, but you can actually see the second seven crossing just in the distance, it's right on the corner. I mean, I've not been on many piers in my life, and the ones I've been on tend to be the same ones, like the one in Weston, this one, and I can't really think of many others. But I've seen videos of other ones, and I'm pretty sure they're normally quite low down. This one seems remarkably quite tall. And um, that's probably in large parts for life for the big boats that used to come into it, but also um, I can't see the water coming up that high. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it comes up all the way over there normally. But it does seem very tall. Oh, that's cool. This little fish sign on the um, benches. One of those are cool. The benches stretch all the way down this pier. I guess it's a space for people to sit down where they are waiting for their cruise or boat to leave. It's not like massive cruise ships, but yeah. And let's see if I can find that One Direction plaque. It's quite a large plaque, if I remember rightly, when Dad found it last time we came on here. So let's see if we can find it. And as you can see, One Direction also have their plaque here as well. 23rd of March 2014.